Welcome back to Dielectric Videos. On today's episode, I'm going to show you a very special item that I purchased on eBay. This is an early 20th century, possibly late 19th century incandescent light bulb, carbonized cotton filament, or probably not cotton, probably bamboo, but carbon filament bulb. Now this is gonna be the second light bulb that I've powered up. The first one was unfortunately a 32 volt bulb that I thought was a 120 volt bulb. And when I powered it with 60 volts, it burned out immediately. This one, however, I'm almost certain based on the markings that it's 110 volt. And it's in fact even older than the first bulb I worked on. You can see by the ceramic base or the porcelain base on this, that it's likely earlier than 1910, most likely even earlier than 1905, which puts this bulb as, as being at least 110 years old, possibly 120 years old. Now you can see it has some hours on it already, because the inside of the glass is quite dark. So I'm going to be really careful not to overdrive it, and I'm hoping to get it to only drive at about 5 watts, even though it was likely around 60 watts originally. So the way I'm going to actually drive this is using a current source. In this case, I'm going to be driving it using a capacitive dropper as the current source. This is a 7.5 microfarad capacitor that I'm going to connect in series with it. And I'll be powering it currently with a modified sine wave supply, but I'll also probably try it with a pure sine supply as well. Now, one of the interesting things about carbon filament bulbs is they actually have a positive or a negative coefficient of resistance with temperature. What this means is when they're cold, they have extremely high resistance and they actually will not light up until you apply a fairly high voltage. However, as soon as they start lighting up, the current starts to go up very, very quickly. And that means that a positive feedback loop can occur, which can quickly burn out the bulb. That's why it's actually better to drive these types of light bulbs using a current source, which limits the current to a maximum level that's safe to handle by the filament, rather than a voltage source, which can allow the current to go up exponentially with temperature. So looking closer at the lamp, you can see something very cool about this. There is a little label made out of paper inside the glass vessel at the base of the bulb that actually lists the patent dates of the actual patents that this lamp, this lamp was designed under. You can see the earliest date on here actually says January 13th, 91, as in 1891. And the most recent one on here, if you zoom in here, let me see if I can get it, says April 28th, 03. Now, 03 is indica indicative of 1903, but what that tells us is that the oldest this could possibly be is, 2000, is 1903, but it's possible that, uh, it's really not likely, I should say, that it's very much newer than that, because a lot of light bulb technology development occurred in the early 1900s, and more likely, the manufacturer would have covered this under a patent from later if it had been manufactured more than a couple of years after this. That means that this bulb is very likely in excess of 115 years old. That is very, very cool. And that means we're going to have a lot of fun with this thing starting it up. Now, you can see also that the top of this paper uh, in here is rather darkened and slightly burned. This also serves to verify against the dark color of the glass that this bulb was run extremely hard or for a long period of life. That means we want to be really careful once again when we power this up because the filament probably has already lost a lot of its material as it's been sputtered off over the years. Now I know this is 110 bulb not only because of the markings on it, but also because the uh, original seller that I bought it from showed a picture of it actually running on a modern lamp socket. Now, running it on a modern lamp socket was a very, very uh, questionable thing to do because this uh, modern lamps operated 120 volts, and these old-fashioned ones were never rated to operate higher than 110. So that's why we're going to be powering it through our ballast system and using a constant current source via a capacitive dropper to drive this. So now I'm going to set up the wiring, and let's get this thing fired up. All right, I've installed the bulb in the ballast fixture, and I have the capacitor connected to one side of the series load. Now I can already tell that the light bulb is in functional condition because the neon bulb has turned on, which indicates that voltage is present at the ballast leads. That being said though, we want to be careful because uh, it's possible that oxygen could have penetrated the inside of the vessel, and if that happens, the bulb will burn out within seconds. So we want to be super, super cognizant if we see any sort of smoke or anything weird in the bulb that we depower it immediately. 
But here we go. We've got a 7.5 microfarad ballast, modified sine wave, which is going to give us a little bit more uh, conduction through the actual capacitor, which will hopefully help turn that bulb on because it, it does have that high resistance initially. But of course, it'll never receive more than 240 volts because, or 120 volts, because that's as much as the inverter can generate. So let's, uh, I'm going to just touch it for a short period of time to start. Oh, it, it lit. It was kind of bright there. Maybe a little too bright. Oh, I would say that's not bad. I don't see any hot spots. The first bulb I ever ran, when I overvolted it, grew a bunch of hot spots. Let's clip this on here. So actually, it looks way brighter on the cell phone than it does in person. Uh, looking at it in person, it barely looks brighter than like the LCD screen on my phone. But it certainly doesn't look like anything's getting too hot in there. I don't see any like really bright bits. I also don't really want to cycle it on and off very much because that actually will deteriorate the filament much more quickly than just running it. So now that it's on and it looks stable, I think I'm going to get my multimeter out and try to measure like the current and the voltage across it, see if it's uh, operating within its normal uh, parameters. This really is one of the most beautiful light bulbs I've ever seen. You know, I'm a big geek for vintage electronics, but something about this, even if I wasn't even interested in electronics, would still strike you as just one of the coolest things ever. The way that filament loops around, the fact that there's basically just a few inches of filament in there, it's not like modern bulbs that have a huge coil of filament that goes on and on. This is like the real deal. It's just this little string of carbon that lights up. I want to show you some electrical measurements on it next, but man, just take some time to appreciate how cool that is and how just what a beautiful piece of engineering that is. So the next thing I want to do now is characterize this bulb. So the next thing I'm going to do is measure the voltage across it with the ballast in place because I really don't have a good way of knowing exactly what voltage is or what current is being passed through, particularly on modified sine wave, which is going to send large bursts of current for short periods of time through the capacitor. So let's uh, very carefully put our measurement leads on here. I don't want to disturb the light bulb at all because I'd be afraid it would uh, knock the filament around and damage it. So we're getting 71.6 volts across the bulb. So that'll be kind of our first measurement to determine what the actual uh, operating power is going to be. So with the ballast, 71.6 volts is what it takes to light that, uh, that bulb lamp and that filament. And the next thing I'm going to do is measure the current through the supply conductor. So as you can see here, I have the clamp meter connected to the supply line to the bulb, and it's drawing about th just under 300 milliamps of current. Now at 71 volts, that indicates that the bulb is burning at about 21 watts, which is a little bit higher than what I want for my long-term operation of the bulb, but certainly still well below its approximately 60 watt uh, rating that this type of bulb was typically suited to operate. Now at 21 watts, this is actually going to be uh, able to operate for a fairly long amount of time. However, what I like to do is actually replicate the conditions under which the Centennial bulb in Livermore, California has been burning for the last 117 years. Due to issues in its filament causing higher resistance, the Centennial bulb is actually only burning at between 5 and 6 watts, and that's actually one of the main reasons why it's lasted so incredibly long. You should go check out their website. It actually is a really cool piece of history, and it's actually what got me interested in carbonized uh, film or carbonized filament bulbs in the first place. But in the long term, I'm actually planning on operating this bulb continuously as a display, and I will be using a very low value capacitor to try to optimize the supply voltage to approximately give it around 5 to 8 watts of output power. Since the square wave output of the modified sine wave inverter does produce a somewhat unpredictable measurement on both voltage and current, I'm actually going to repeat all of these tests now using a pure sine wave supply from the mains. So let me do that. So here it is operating off of mains power. You can see it is slightly dimmer and it is actually drawing slightly less current because of the lack of uh, large inrush currents during these uh, voltage spikes on the modified sine wave supply. That's about 280 milliamps, and next I'm going to take a measurement of the voltage at the bulb. 
So as you can see here, with mains power, it only, only has around 69.3 volts across the filament right now. So at 280 milliamps and 69.3 volts, that's approximately 19 watts. Like I said, that's still a little bit higher than I want this to be burning in my long-term test or my long-term uh, sort of museum piece that I want to make out of this. But it is definitely healthy to operate it for, you know, units of minutes to hours at a time on that. So I'll begin specking out a lower value capacitor. Since this is a 7.5 microfarad cap, I think I'd like to try something like a 3.3. Uh, I also want to find a capacitor that's very stable in the long term. So maybe a film capacitor or something similar to that. Ultimately, I'd like to see, uh, assuming this doesn't get broken or see any voltage surges, I'd like to see this thing potentially last for, you know, potentially 30 to 50 years of burn time. Uh, and if I get it down to something small like 5 watts, I won't be nearly as concerned about, you know, wasting energy on a relatively inefficient light bulb. I think that's going to be really awesome, and I'm looking forward in the next video to showing you what kind of setup I have for my sort of long-term museum piece of this light bulb.